So this is what I wanna do. For the next, like say 90 days, I wanna actually be auditing and going through majority of the top 30 tokens on uh, CoinMarketCap. And the reason why I wanna do this is very simple. I just wanna educate you. I'm not gonna tell you what to invest in. I don't really give a shit about that. I'm not gonna tell you uh, what to buy or what not to buy or whether to trade. I really don't care. What I wanna tell you or what I wanna give you is the necessary tools and information for you to do your own due diligence. It's simple as that. And one of the easy things that I tell people who come to me towards an IC or a token is I tell them to do something called the Lean Canvas model, uh, which is we use in a startup space. It's very simple. Let me show you how it looks. And I tell them to make this into a token Lean Canvas model. And so pretty much it's no different. It's, uh, you go through the ringer over here. What problem is your new startup solving, right? Uh, what is the economics of that token? Why do you even need a token? Uh, what is the governance of that token? Who are the participants? What's the governance or how's the economy outside it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so pretty much you go through each single one of these boxes and you write out why on God's earth do you need a token? What does it do? What's the governance? How's the token economics? Who's actually building this uh, team or startup, et cetera. And so basically I'm not gonna go in order on CoinMarketCap. I'm just gonna go randomly things that make sense to me or things that um, more or less people want to learn about. And so that's how we're going to go through this video is actually going from each single section within this lean canvas. Now, some, as in this example right now, will not maybe fit in every single box because it's a little bit different because there's a big difference between trying to compare Ethereum to a DAP built on Ethereum, right? One's a protocol, one is a DAP. Uh, so for today's video, what I want to be talking about is EOS. The reason I want to be talking about it is because it's in the limelight right now. Price is going up. People are asking questions. I'm like, okay, let's just do a little basic dive on EOS and see where it's at. And so the first thing, you know, for going back to the Lean Canvas model over here is what problem does EOS solve? Well, according to EOS, right? Let me if you follow my mouse over here. EOS blockchain is aiming to become a decentralized operating system which can support industry scale decentralized applications. Um, so that's that. And these are the two following claims. They are planning to completely remove transaction fees, which is interesting. You know, there's issues with that and there's also, it's pretty innovative. So there's you know, double-edged sword and they're claiming to have the ability to conduct millions of transactions per second. So to give you some example, comparing that to Bitcoin, which is roughly three to four transactions per second and Ethereum is roughly around 20, give or take. If you have a DAP, it's around seven transactions per second, right? So that's a problem they're trying to solve. They're trying to solve this scaling of a decentralized ecosystem. Okay, uh, next. So then you go down the Lean Canvas model. So the next one is, is there any competition? Well, there's a bunch of them. These are just on top of my head. You got Bitcoin, you got Ethereum, you got Neo, you got Waves, you got Qtum, you got Cosmos, you have in the future Polkadot, et cetera, et cetera. So there's many of these new, let's say, platforms or side chains that are coming out to compete in the, in, in, in the space of scalability, okay? So they're not, EOS is not the only one doing. There's many, many other ones, and also an, a, an Aeon, okay? Uh, the participants, like who's who's doing what in EOS? Well, EOS is originally idea comes from Dan Lamer, which is from Steam and BitShares, and pretty much he took BitShares, evolved the code, and this is what EOS today. However, the EOS code itself, I would say the production code, not the code itself, but the production of EOS is being produced by Block One, which is a software company from the Cayman Islands. Okay, so there's that, and obviously there's other investors involved. I mean, there's a shit ton of investors involved in EOS. I won't get into that yet. So the governance, like who makes decision within EOS, right? So EOS is delegated proof of stake. It's much different than proof of work, which is a Bitcoin. It's much different than proof of stake, which Ethereum will be maybe end of this year or next year. So delegated proof of stake, this is how they define it. EOS has a delegated proof of stake as a democratically elected block validators of the blockchain. The term is used to interchangeably with block validator. There's a small set of 21 delegates or you know, master nodes who act as <laughs> master nodes in the network. The job of the delegate is to sign and validate transactions in addition to extending the chain. These delegates are voted into office by the stakeholders of the EOS tokens. If, you have, if, you're, if you're holding EOS token, you'll be voting on who you want your master notes to be, right? So more or less like voting for politicians. There's a lot of issues that as well. And a lot of people are talking about these issues. There's a lot of pros and cons to that. One interesting thing though, 
when it comes to the no fee structure, so in Ethereum, it's a rental fee. In EOS is a no fee structure is to just, because you got to stake your EOS uh, for these master nodes, right? So the cost of just of these 21 nodes per year would be roughly about $121 million. So then $121 million of expenses that EOS network will have to pay annually for these 21 nodes. So the question is, who's going to pay for that, right? Um, it's, it's an interesting question, right? There's going to be inflation going on. There's going to be dilution of the EOS supply. Uh, so it's going to be fascinating to see how they are able to afford the $121 million a year to host these, oops, to host these 21 nodes or master nodes. Okay, so usage of tokens. So why even have an EOS token? Well, there's three main reasons why. One, to buy bandwidth space on the network. Two, for storage. And three, as I just mentioned, for voting, right? So consensus. You can use your EOS token to vote for block producers, as I mentioned, the 21 delegates, by locking them up and creating scarcity. The vote locks up tokens for roughly six months, but this length of time may vary, and people are still trying to figure out if it's six months or more or less. Uh, then you got renting or loaning the token. You can lock up the token for a dApp you like. You could lend network capacity to an application that may pay you in their own tokens, like passive income, which there's a lot of fucking red alarms when I hear passive income in tokens, and then it's going to be securities, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, then developing apps. As a dApp becomes more popular, the more tokens they will need to have more throughput, right? So. You need more tokens to buy more bandwidth if you own a DAP, right? All these tokens allow the throughput are locked up and create scarcity, so they're staking the token. The DAP developer may choose not to rent these from the community so they don't have to pay in their own token. So the thing is, like, if you want to create a DAP on EOS, you pretty much have to stake your EOS tokens to buy bandwidth uh, for this DAP to exist on EOS, which is fascinating. They're like really doubling down on this whole staking mechanism on EOS. Health indicators, really don't know. Mainnet has launched that. That happens uh, sometime in June. Token distribution and value. It's hard to predict value as an investor. Like I said at the beginning, I don't really care about investing prices, or et cetera, but this is an ongoing ICO that's been going on for a year and it ends about 30 days. So it's fascinating to figure out the token distribution and all these different private sales and who bought what because it's a one year fucking ICO. Well, final thoughts. Well, the couple of people in the industry are speaking about it. Vitalik talks about because it's removing Merkle proofs and other protections without regular users auditing it, it might actually have issues with EOS. Um, for me, besides what Vitalik said, for me, what's fascinating is the no fee system and the staking system, right? So there's two big issues for me. Number one is if I have to pay for bandwidth and I know for a fact that my EOS token keeps on increasing and increasing, I will not use my EOS token to stake, or I would not use my EOS token to buy bandwidth because it's valuable, more valuable to me as an asset. Same thing like Bitcoin. Would you use Bitcoin right now to buy bandwidth on the internet? No, you're not gonna use up your Bitcoin. You know that that Bitcoin might go 2X or 3X next year. So it's an asset, appreciating asset. And so I see that issue with the whole velocity of that token and why would somebody just use it if they know that's gonna increase in value. Next big one, and this isn't just for EOS, this is for Ethereum and all these other decentralized platforms, is dApps. I'm not sold on them. I think there's very rare use cases for dApps, extremely rare use cases. Then all of a sudden, like you have this old dApp revolution. I don't see too many things being dApps, tell you the truth. There are some use cases, like video games make sense. Um, yeah, there's other things I won't get into right now. But more or less, like they're hedging on the fact, whoa, my light went out. Um, They're hedging on the fact that there's going to be, you know, hundreds and thousands of DAP developers on there and users, which I don't see the real use case right now. I might be wrong, right? Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. But overall, EOS is a fascinating platform. I'm excited to, for it to launch because I'm a firm believer in more competition equals innovation. More people pushing each other equals innovation. And there is a saying, the market's always right. Now, in this case, EOS being valued at this ridiculous amount, like if we go to over oh, here, here we go, on-chain FX, where are we at? My mouse is here. Market cap is $27 billion. Like, that's crazy. It's not even launched yet, and it's worth $27 billion. Um, the cool thing is if you look at GitHub, in the last 90 days, they have about 1,500 lines of code that have been, oh no, sorry, that's not even line of code, that's their commits. 
They have 1,500 commits on GitHub. Ethereum has 219. Oh, Bitcoin's been doing a lot, 443. I love this site, way better than CoinMarketCap, on-chain FX, a solid, solid website. Uh, so for me, I'm looking at something that hasn't launched yet, $27 billion, it's at 18 bucks. Uh, I don't know, 24, uh, 24 hour volume, about 3 billion. I don't know, I th is it overvalued in my eyes? Yes, for something that doesn't even exist, like give me a break, you know what I mean? But then again, that's what speculation's for and let's be honest with, you, with everybody. Most people here just make money. They're not here for actual technology building businesses. That's what speculators are for. Anyways, there's my quick overcap of EOS. It is a delegated proof of stake mechanism based on voting, based on buying bandwidth within their ecosystem. It can scale hundreds of thousands of times fat. Well, supposedly it can scale hundreds and thousands of times faster than Bitcoin and Ethereum. And a lot of people are hedging on it. So you make your bets. Anyways, I hope this helps always. And remember always to use the lean canvas model like this, right? Simple problem, scale, growth, economy, governance, like I said at the beginning, not all things will be applied to all projects, but it's a good template. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Peace.